Welcome back to Classic Replay. This one is the Master System. Picture this, the Sega Master System, released in 1986. It came in, it strutted its stuff, all posh and pixelated, challenging Nintendo like a proper cheeky git. Oi, Nintendo, it said. I'm here to give you a run for your money. Armed with cartridges and a credit card sized Sega card. It fancied itself all right, but despite its early swagger, Nintendo held strong. Till this day, I still don't know how. Starting with Alex Kidd in Miracle World, I'm going to state my case for the Master System and why I believe it's the best 8-bit console ever made. You see, it's not always about hardware specs. That helps, don't get me wrong. It's about software as well. And Alex Kidd in Miracle World was never bettered on the Sega Master System. Don't get me wrong, the other Alex Kidd games that followed were fun, but they never topped this. And get this, it only ever appeared on the Sega Master System. Go Sega! Fantasy Star on the Sega Master System. Woohoo! And as far as I'm aware, the best role playing game ever to appear on the Sega Master System. And it's got a quest that'll last you, and I kid you not, months on end. And it's another game you couldn't get on Nintendo. And I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not an RPG fan, but this is deep and beautiful. It looks terrific, it sounds fantastic, it's a great game. Some even say the best game on the Sega Master System. Even when you complete this game, it stays with you. What a story. Ah, Monster World 2, otherwise known as Wonder Boy 3. All very confusing, but there's something we need to get out of the way before we move on. The PC Engine version is superior. But you know what, I've always argued that the PC Engine is not a true 8-bit, as the 8-bit CPU is paired with a 16-bit dual processing unit, which allowed the video encoder, when enabled, to display up to 482 colours simultaneously out of a palette of 512. That's like fitting a turbo on a Mark 1 Ford Cortina. It's just not cricket. R-Type on the Master System. Now, I love the ZX Spectrum arcade conversion by Bob Pape. And then there's the Amiga 500 conversion, which is absolutely superlative. And since we've mentioned the Amiga 500, we have to mention the PC Engine version as well. And I didn't like it. The screen scrolled up and down, and that really put me off. But hey, some people swear by it, so who am I to argue? What I can say though, well in my humble personal opinion, is that this conversion, it's up there, it's in the mix, and it's probably the best of the 8-bit conversions. And that pains me to say because I absolutely love the Bob Pape conversion. I used to think the Master System was primitive for its time. I'd see it there in WH Smith's and other retail stores. It felt like too little, too late. I mean, I'd seen what the Amiga and the Atari ST could do, and I'd seen glimpses in the magazines of the day, uh, computer and video games, meme machines. I was aware of what the PC Engine could do as well, but it had a massive following in the UK, and I always wondered why. But the reality is this, whilst the hardware wasn't extraordinary, for an 8-bit machine, the software played as though it was light years ahead. It's almost as if the developers really cared. And OutRun shows that in abundance. It's a fantastic, accurate arcade conversion. You'd have been happy with this if you owned a Master System back in the day. And drawing parallels on that, just look at what Amiga and Atari ST owners got in comparison. And also to rub salt into the wound, the Amstrad CPC arcade conversion was atrocious. So can you imagine if Sega would have done the home conversions for those machines as well. And that's what I'm trying to say. The Sega Master System had the backing from the original OG developers. Nine times out of 10, you had the creme de la creme working on your console. I'm sure it didn't always work out that way, but for the big hitters, the developers appear to have delivered. Golden Axe Warrior. Who even came up with the idea for this? Talk about innovation and being ahead of their time, only on the Master System. 
It seems to me that Golden Axe Warrior just wasn't able to position itself outside of Zelda's shadow and fans of the hack and slash 2D scroller just couldn't accept it. But it's an RPG alright and it's definitely not inferior to Zelda. If anything it lasts longer because it's more difficult. I'd also go as far to say that it's one of the best RPGs for the 8-bit era. But hey what do I know I'm more of a JRPG fan. But only just. I think it's a great game. But it's just a shame. It feels like nobody else noticed. Good old Outrun Europa. It's Outrun, but not as we know it. And get this, you start off in good old Blighty. Sadly, Turbo Outrun didn't appear on the Sega Master System. Developers US Gold and Sega jumped straight to this. And that's a shame in a way because it limited people's options, especially mine for wanting to play Turbo Outrun, because I love that game. And for a while, I was desperate to play it on a Sega console. Despite that, this has got everything. It looks good, it sounds good, and it's bloody fast. There's no doubt that Shinobi on the Sega Master System is a slimmed down version, but it still captures the arcade experience. And I think it's widely accepted that this is a must own title for anyone that owns a Master System. You see, the great thing about it is it provides a substantial challenge. It somehow managed to provide all the core elements of the arcade original, and that's some achievement, considering the console's 8-bit architecture. Naturally, there's some concessions in the graphic department and the sound, and I have no problems admitting that sometimes I play this, or choose to play this, over the arcade original. So, Space Harrier. Well, the transition from the arcade to the 8-bit Master System isn't an altogether smooth experience. There's also a loss in the sensation of speed, but despite all that, it still retained its core gameplay, and I still found it enjoyable. So despite the technical constraints, Space Harrier on the Master System still managed to capture the essence of the arcade original. So it's a valuable title and it's a history lesson and it proved that Sega didn't need to chase the hardware. You can get the best out of what you've already got. Ah, good old Raston. This game appears to have been ported to every machine known to man. It's got remarkable music and the playability stands out. And while Raston lacks originality in the concept of rescuing a fair maiden, it more than compensates with its intense action and superb gameplay. I've personally played this on lots of different systems. The Amstrad CPC, the Commodore 64, the ZX Spectrum is a fantastic arcade conversion, I might add. But outside of the arcade original, I believe this is the best I've played. And the Master System version is still great. Ah, the legendary Fantasy Zone. Warning though, this is not a shoot -em up this is a cute em up <laughs> It's also one of the best games ever on the Sega Master System. Your ship is also quite special. It's called Opa Opa, and it can fly, soar through the air, and it also can run on the ground. Little legs pop out. The game's fast pace also transcends it above Gradius, R-Type and other such titles. It's just a charming experience with a fantastic learning curve. I've always loved Fire and Forget 2, ever since I read the Meme Machine review, where they compared it with the GX4000 version. There was no comparison. It was that day, I think it was around 1990 or 1991, that I rushed out, bought a Sega Master System, and a copy of Fire and Forget 2, and have never looked back. It's better than the Amiga, Atari ST, Amstrad, you name it, this is the definitive version, and it goes like shizzle off a shovel. It's a fantastic challenge, I still play it today, and it's further testament as to why the Sega Master System was the definitive 8-bit. Ah, oh, this charming and widely beloved game has conquered the charts, on nearly every home computer throughout the years. But it was adventure onto the unexplored territory of the Master System that I'm here to sell. The graphics remain consistent with other versions, featuring Bub and Bob leaping energetically from ledge to ledge. 
The abundance of bonuses and the hidden rooms adds to its allure, making it a highly sought after game. If you've experienced the other iterations, you'll recognize the addictive nature of the concept and the Master System version delivers just the same thrill, if not more. It's no secret, I grew up with the Amstrad CPC and Gauntlet was one of its better games. I think it might even be considered the better arcade game version of all the 8-bit computers. But all I'll say is this one not only has the speed, the smoothness of scroll, it also goes like a bat out of hell and it looks highly detailed. It's probably one of the best arcade conversions on the Sega Master System. It also happens to be one of my favorite games of all time. I'm just shocked, I'm in awe of what the developers did here. And it goes some way to show how powerful the 8-bit hardware actually is. And well done to Tengen and US Gold, fantastic development. Gobble up those ghosts and chomp your way to victory. There's no doubt about it in my mind, this is a worthy successor to the arcade original. It's 100% clear that Pac-Mania brought the arcade experience home with a cherry on top for the Master System. It also retained all the secrets and surprises of the arcade original. Call him biased, but even Pac-Man himself gave it the thumbs up. Even today, it's an arcade conversion that gives hours of fun and nostalgia for all gamers of all ages. Inventive gameplay, catchy soundtrack, colourful graphics, what more could you wish for? I give you Psycho Fox. Overall, Psycho Fox is highly celebrated as a standout title on the Sega Master System, but not just for its fun factor, for its creativity as well. Players enjoy the ability to switch between different characters, each with their own unique abilities. Then there's the boss battles, secrets and hidden areas. It's a highly rewarding game for those willing to explore every nook and cranny of the gaming world. The wonderful Rainbow Islands. The story of Bubble Bobble 2. When you look at the main sprite, is this how they came up with the idea for the characters in South Park? So Bubble Bobble was a highly successful game on the Master System. This is the sequel converted from the original Amiga version. The dinosaurs have gone sadly, but this time they've morphed into two adorable little boys. And the journey sees them travel through seven distinct worlds, all while searching for the nefarious black satin. It's a captivating adventure, and I think it's one of the best on the Master System and it's got a simultaneous two-player mode. Hey Pluto! I'm not really a Disney fan, but when I played this game in WH Smith's on the Sega Master System that was on display, I fell in love with it. The gameplay mechanics were really solid. It not only featured fantastic platform action, but also fantastic puzzle-solving elements. The graphics were really colorful, the character animation was brilliant, and the catchy music only added to its appeal. From memory, it was even better on the Sega Mega Drive, but this is the one I always go back to. Even today for your children, it's a truly magical adventure. Ah, good old asterisk. They certainly don't make them like this anymore. But if they did, the world and gaming would be a much better place. Especially if you're a fan of the comic book. As far as challenge goes and fun, this is probably the most you'll have on the Sega Master System. There's a good balance between platforming and combat, and the control mechanism is some of the best I've ever experienced. Interesting enough, this was created by Core Design, the same people that went on to create Tomb Raider, Lara Croft. How on earth did they get Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and the Sega Master System? But better still, how is it so great? What I mean by that is the graphics are not only better, but the level design as well and the gameplay mechanics have all improved. I mean, don't get me wrong, it can't hope to compete with the Sega Mega Drive, but technical specs aside, this is a solid platformer and it doesn't let the Sonic series down. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, share with your friends or other like-minded people and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Also, don't worry, I won't keep you waiting as long for the next video. Until next time, ta a bit!